This passage, he speaks of these three things. Being saved and sure comes, first of all, from the work of Christ Jesus himself. He who overcomes the world, he said, only he who believes in the Son of God, this is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. Now, what in the world is he talking about when he talks about the water and blood? Listen, friends, when he speaks about the water and the blood, he is speaking about what Christ did for you and for me. If we want to reference this, you can make a note in your margin to go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 22 to 23. Jesus Christ has been upon the cross. It's toward the end of the day, and it is the end of, a, it is the end of Friday. And Friday at sundown, the Jewish Sabbath begins. And so the Jewish officials put pressure on the Roman soldiers on any Friday they crucified to go ahead and make sure the, the, the condemned men are dead before the Sabbath begins. So the Roman soldiers would take a sledgehammer and break their legs. If their legs were broken, they could no longer push up. If they could no longer push up, they could no longer breathe, and they would suffocate and die more quickly. Actually, it was merciful. And so toward the end of Friday, Toward the sundown, toward the beginning of the Sabbath, the Roman soldiers went to the three men on the cross to break their legs. But when they came to Jesus in the middle cross, they observed he was already dead. And to make sure, one of the soldiers took a spear and punctured his side. And John Gospel testifies that they saw water and blood come out of his side. Now, why water? and blood. Earlier that day, Jesus had been flogged. This is a brutal, extremely inhumane form of punishment where a whip with maybe pieces of bone or rock tied on the various ends of it would be used to tear open the flesh on the back of the sufferer. The beatings were brutal, often the condemned man would die from the beating itself. There would be tremendous loss of blood. The tremendous loss of blood would lead to what's called hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock is because of the loss of the volume of blood. So what would the symptoms of that shock be? Well, one would be weakness to the, ver to the point of collapse. What happened when Jesus was carrying the cross up the hill? He collapsed and someone else had to take the cross. Another one of the symptoms of hypovolemic shock or the onset of it would be an incredible thirst because the body has no fluids or little fluids left. What's one of the few words Jesus said from the cross? I thirst. The man was going into hypovolemic shock. The heart and the lungs, because of the lack of blood volume in the body, begin working overtime harder and harder. And a result of them working overtime harder and harder, fluid begins to collect in the pericardium sac around the heart and the sac around the lungs. You could say, I think very literally, Jesus died on the cross of a broken heart because his heart just gave out from the immensity of the suffering. When they punctured his side, they punctured either the sack around his lung or the sack around his heart, and there the fluid, the water, had gathered and what blood remained in his body. So they observed water and blood. Blood and water. So when John 
says this, and he was there at the foot of the cross. He witnessed this, the water and the blood. He's speaking about what Christ did for you and me and his immense suffering for us. But the water and the blood also symbolizes what Christ did for us. For you see, the blood symbolizes the remission of sin. The book of Hebrews tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. God is a just God and a holy God, and he demands that sin be punished, and the punishment for sin is death, the shedding of blood. So the whole sacrificial system that was intended to foreshadow the coming of Christ evolved, involved around the shedding of blood. His blood was shed for the remission of my sins and yours. And the water, the water symbolizes the cleansing of sin. For you see... We not only need our sins forgiven, we need to be cleansed, made so that we are worthy of coming into his presence. What does this have to do with being saved and being sure? The hymn writers understand this. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but a low, holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Or another hymn writer, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure, saved from wrath to make me pure. You see, the hymn writers understood the theology and that's where the beginning of our certainty of our salvation comes from, is knowing what Christ did for us. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. And in that, we are cleansed and made clean.